partner adjacent to each other at the start of the noble's turn. They both gain temp wounds equal to the servant's toughness or noble fell bonus of which is higher. You, go. The noble servant gains plus two movement points. You, kill it. <laughs> if the servant kills the target that the noble dealt damage to last turn, the noble gains one AP next turn. You, you are next. If the servant has less than 30% max wounds, the noble can use you serve me once more in battle, designating a new servant and removing the effect from the previous one. The noble cannot designate a character who was already their servant this combat. <laughs> I'm just imagining this guy hiding behind a box and just uh, acting like this the whole time. Uh, sanctioned Psyker. Uh, Psychers are feared and distrusted, but nonetheless valuable assets to the Imperium. The role of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica is to recruit, identify, and classify those found to possess psychic abilities. Those most powerful who somehow survive the rigorous sanctioning rituals are selected to serve on the battlefield. The mind of a sanctioned Psyker is steeled against the manifold dangers risked by the wielders of warp powers. You are one of those found worthy to serve humanity and have miraculously survived the perils of the warp. Note, damaging Psyker's pa power, uh, damaging Psyker powers count as weapon attacks, counting toward the normal attack limit per round, gaining all the benefits of abilities and talents, increasing the damage of attacks. For example, a soldier using run and gun ability will be able to use damaging Psyker powers twice per turn, and an operative's analyze enemy's ability affects uh, the damage of damaging Psyker powers. Okay. Um, sanctioned Psyker. Reduced chances of triggering psychic phenomena. Psy rating zero. This character is a psyker, albeit a weak one. Um, willpower. Resand to the warp, blah, blah, blah. Toughness. How easy a character can shrug off injuries as well as how easy they can resist toxins, poisonous environments, diseases, and other diseases. It increases chance of seeing negative effects. Uh, lore warp. Um, good lord, there's a lot here. Divination, specialized in gleaning information and using it to turn fortune in your favor. Uh, Biomancy, manipulating living flesh and biological processes, can heal wounds and alter physical characteristics. Can heal wounds? Is this guy like a healer? Telepathy, uh, telepaths are psychers whose mental expertise lies in contacting and controlling the minds of others. With a single thought, a telepath can tear away his foe's sanity, inducing states of numbing terror. Pyromancy. A pyromancer is a master of flame, a psyker who is able to create searing infernos out of thin air. Pyromancy is one of the most spectacular and destructive forms of psychic ability, and those who face a pyromancer in combat are often reduced to naught but a pile of charred bones. Check next panel. You only get one ability. Those are options. Ah. Uh, okay. Good to know. Well, hold on a sec. Like, if I hover this... So Commissar, Crime Lord, what is logic? Affects uh, rational arguments more convincing and allows to notice any logical inconsistencies in other people's words. Also it helps to uh, operate cogitators more efficiently. May give access to new dialogue. Priest. Okay, you just pick plus five to a stat. Navy, you pick plus five to a stat. Noble, you pick plus five to a stat. Psyker's the only one with this really cool secondary screen. Uh, okay. <sighs> Telepathy. All right, so you pick one of these things. All right, talent, Psy rating. Each level of Psy rating provides the Psyker access to new powers. It also strengthens damaging psychic powers. All right. Uh, psy, 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 Psy. Uh, still mind, resolve is increased by willpower. Uh, inscribed soul, gains inscribed soul ability, costs no AP, but deals direct damage to the Psyker, equal to 25% of Psyker's maximum. What? You use direct damage to yourself? The next psychic power used after this will not trigger psychic phenomena. Oh, it's like you take damage to avoid, like, summoning demons. Psychic powers have a 25% chance to regain AP spent on psychic powers when Veiled Degradation is 10 or lower. Blade of the Light, Force Weapon Attacks, do more damage. Enforce Reality. Uh, usage of a Heroic Act by the Psyker decreases Veiled Degradation by Int Bonus. 
Uh, when psychers reach deeper into the warp to power their abilities, there's always a chance of the Empyrean bleeding into our reality, unleashing its destructive influence. Use of psyker powers, both in uh, allies and foes, tears of the veil between the Materium and the Immaterium, between reality and the nightmarish realms beyond. While the veil holds, using psychic powers presents a little danger. Ah, I didn't mean to click that. Um, and their uh, use merely triggers psychic phenomena. But should Veil Degradation reach 15, the chance to cause Psychic Phenomena double and Perils of the Warp may occur any time a major Psychic Power is used. The chance for it to occur is equal to numbers. At this point, any major Psychic Power that does not cause Perils instead causes Phenomena. What's Phenomena? Each time, uh, let's see, Psychic Phenomena are more disconcerting than dangerous, in, uh, intruding into the thoughts of people around the Psyker or causing omens and visions. It reduces the momentum of the party, distracting them from combat, lowering morale, or just causing bad luck. Psychers can be sanctioned or unsanctioned. Chances that sanctioned psychers will cause phenomena are halved, while unsanctioned uh, instead have um, worse numbers. Okay. I'm gonna be honest, this guy sounds the most interesting so far. Uh, see, Biomancers specialize in manipulating biological energy and processes with the power of their minds. Masters of the flesh! Learning to shape and influence their own physical forms according to their will, as well as those of allies and enemies. Uh, let's see. Biomancy can heal wounds and alter physical characteristics. Iron Arm. The target gains bigger strength and toughness till the end of combat. Okay. Wait, you could just... Is this on you, or you could put this on somebody else? Uh, abilities. Enfeeble. Until the end of combat, all targets within the area suffer penalty to strength and agility, uh, and percent increase to all incoming damage. Okay, debuff on enemies. Invigorate restores wounds to the target. If this ability brings the target to full wounds, there, this ability also removes stun to bleed, fatigue, blind, immobilize. Okay, uh, Condi Cleanse. Metabolic overcharge. Target imme ally immediately gains an extra turn? with twice the number of their normal movement points and psychosiring AP, but their organism is subjected to severe stress, making them suffer max wound damage at the end of each turn until the end of combat. Uh, regeneration. Until the end of combat, the target recovers wounds at the beginning of each of their turns and removes one toxin, stun, immobi, bleeding, blinded, stagger, fatigue. If the target has several effects, the removed effect is selected randomly. So I'm still not really sure how wounds and hit points works. Um, hang on. Wounds are a measurement of how much punishment a character could take before suffering debilitating effects and ultimately death. Every character has a specified number of wounds. A character can in often increase their wounds by spending experience points and improving characteristics such as toughness and gaining new talents and abilities. Wounds are hit points. Okay. Uh, so that seems awesome. Warp speed. Until the end of combat, the target ally increases their MP and the region uh, okay, talents. All right, so this this guy seems like the closest thing to a healer I've seen so far. I love this. Let's see if I like anything else even more. Diviner or diviner. Uh, chat. If it's diviner, put a one. If it's diviner, put a two. Let me let me see what y'all say. <laughs> uh, word seeks to discern the hidden past of the galaxy and know the course of events to come. Dang it! It's almost fifty fifty. Oh my 50. god, Jed, It's rave time. Okay, wait. There's more ones now. Uh, all right, it's leaning toward ones. At first, it was almost 50 50. Uh, the abilities allow the diviners to look into the twisted strands of the immaterium and to in the search of answers that they seek and sometimes influence the outcome of fate itself. Forewarning, uh, Psyker increases the target's dodge and parry until the end of combat. Foreboding, create an area that lasts until the start of the Psyker's next turn. Allies get more dodge. Perfect timing. All allies currently affected by any Psyker powers gain perfect timing. When an ally under this effect dodges or parries, if they had a weapon capable of reaching the attacker, uh, they immediately counterattack. Pre-science. <laughs> Gift of pre-science. Ooh. Uh, the target gains Int, Perception, Fellowship, and Willpower till the end of combat. Precognition. Once per round, the Psyker's next turn is moved up by two rounds, two turns in the round initiative sequence. This ability may allow the Psyker to have two turns during one round. Prophetic Intervention. Whenever an ally suffers damage that would make them fall unconscious, the Psyker immediately gets an extra turn. During that turn, the Psyker can only use Prophetic Intervention. The power can only be used under these conditions. Restores the ally's wounds to the amount they had before the attack that triggered the intervention. However, the Psyker's Psy rating is reduced by minus one till the end of combat. 
So it's like they turn back time. That's kind of neat. All right, uh, Pyromancer. Uh, Master of Flame, able to create Searing Infernos out of thin air. Okay. Uh, ignite, a target suffers damage. Oh, Dots build, I love Dot builds too, chat. Um, ba -ba. Orchestrate Flames, target does not stop burning and no longer makes tests stop burning. Uh, targets every melee attack that makes inflicts full burning damage on targets in their attack. Uh, and flame, it's lots of fire. It's lots of freaking fire. Molten Beam deals double the damage of Ignite to all creatures in a 12 cell line and reduces their armor. Warp Burn, Incinerate. Uh, okay, Sang, uh, so we're just gonna sum this up with lots of fire, okay? Uh, Sanctic? I've never read that word before in my life. Psychers of the Sanctic Discipline master their connection to the Golden Throne to support their allies with holy might and stave off demons and heretics. Uh, word of the Emperor, main ability, all allies in a circle uh, get plus rating resolve till the end of combat. Every additional stack of this effect increases their resolve bonus by plus two. Um, what is resolve? Influences how efficiently and for how long characters can fight in battle. It determines the amount of momentum gained at the beginning of each turn or after killing an enemy. Purge Soul uh, does direct damage. Uh, damage is increased by 50% chance against Xenos. 100%. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> okay, my understanding of Warhammer is humans call anything not human Xenos. So that means that this is just like racist fireball. <laughs> 50% damage against Xenos, 100% more against Chaos Worshippers, 100% more against Drukhari, uh, by 150% more against Demons, and plus 50% if the enemy has already been damaged by the Psyker or any abilities in combat. His damage bonus also affect damage bonuses from other sources. Uh, Light of the Emperor. All allies affected by Word of the Emperor are healed uh, for numbers wounds. Word of the Emperor, that was this. Okay. Until the end of combat. So you have to hit them with this at the beginning of sometime near the beginning of combat for this to work. Uh, Hammer of the Emperor, mm, Shield of the Emperor, uh, increased deflection, Sword of Faith, Psychic powers cost you momentum until the end. Of the, the weapon in the Psyker's hand is replaced by a sword made out of sheer will. The sword has a single target attack with an area attack like a two-handed sword, and can be used to release a cone of fire or line of fire, like a flamethrower. The damage of this sword is the same as that of Purge Soul. If the Psyker uses a force weapon, all the bonuses from that weapon remain on the sword. That's kind of rad. Okay, so the whole deal with this is you try to hit as many of your allies or all of them with Word of the Emperor early in the fight. Then your other skills hit allies that had have Word of the Emperor. But they all had to be in range of this at the beginning for these follow-up things to work. This is kind of neat. I don't know if I like it more than in the Biomancer, but this is neat. Telepath. Uses their psychic powers in conjunction with their own minds to delude, control, and destroy the minds of enemies. Psychic Shriek. Deals numbers damage to the target. Uh, dominate. Uh, spin all the movement points to move as close as possible toward the Psyker. Uh, you make an enemy walk toward you. Psychic Assault does damage to everyone in a cone. They might be stunned. Sensory Deprivation. Uh, enemy rolls willpower. Uh, if they succeed, they're blinded, but if they fail, they become blinded and suffer additional stats to characteristics. Okay, Mind Bond. Target of Mind Bond makes perception and willpower fellowship tests using either theirs or the Psyker stats, whichever is higher, so you use this on an ally. Mind Rupture, if the target makes a resistance test, uh, if the test fails, the target immediately attacks its allies. After the target suffers damage from Psychic Shriek, their willpower is reduced until the end of combat. If the target succeeds resisting it, they just suffer the damage from Scream, and their willpower is reduced. Okay, so chance of making an enemy hit its friends, but even if they resist it, they take damage. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go Biomancer. I like the idea of debuffing enemies, buffing allies, and being able to heal in a pinch. I do, I do like this. Uh, so I'm gonna do this. And I don't know, let's see. Is that WP, is that willpower bonus? That is willpower, okay. So I'm gonna need willpower. And 
I would like to get some int because of the homeworld I picked. I can use int for both int things and conversation things. Okay, here we go. Uh, Apex of Brilliance. Upon solving the mystery of a powerful psychically active Xenos artifact, you manage to destroy the creation of countless enemies of humanity. Plus five to Xenos lore. Which is affected by imps. That's kind of cool. Uh, illustrious Glory. Um, you single-handedly saved a pilgrimage ship by stopping a warp breach while traveling through the Immaterium. Uh, hang on, let me go back to Forge World for a... S no, not that. Homeworld. I, I want to reread re how this works. Forge World characters can use persuasion, coercion, and commerce based on fellowship instead. Sorry, based on int instead of fellowship. Persuasion, coerce, coercion, and commerce. So this would still stack with that, right? It would be like plus five, but then also based on your int uh, afterward. It seems like it would stack if it's read as written. Um, feet of greatness. The power of your sorcery crushed a daemon of the arch enemy and drove it back into the warp. Plus to coercion. The ability to manipulate people. How, how is coercion different from persuasion in this world? It represents a character's talent to manipulate other people through intimidation and reach their desired goals via threats. Oh, it's, it's intimidation. Okay, I got it, I got it. Uh, persuasion. Manipulate other people through negotiation. Okay. Um... I like the idea of being a silver tongue charmer, uh, as I've said in other games. So I'm gonna do this one. I once saved a pilgrim ship um, by stopping a warp breach. And now I have plus five to persuasion. Darkest hour. Oh, you have to choose a negative. I love that. Uh, you were accused of being possessed by a warp entity and forced into exile, leaving your soul forever scarred. Minus five to logic. Brand of shame. Your sorcery caused a warp manifestation aboard a void ship, claiming thousands of lives in the end. Wait, my presence caused a warp. I stopped a warp. Maybe I almost destroyed two ships and then I saved one of them and they don't know it was me. Minus five to awareness. Uh, encompasses the subconscious ability to react to things that the conscious mind may not perceive. Uh, notice traps, cleverly hidden objects, secret passages, unusual secret elements in the environment. Uh, shadows of torment. An error during the sanctioning process brought you many hours of agony, which nearly cost you your life. Uh, minus five to warp knowledge. Alright. Uh, as a reminder, you don't start with these, you get them when you level up. Eh. Awareness. What? Is, hold on a sec. What is perception from? Oh, it's its own thing. Okay. Um. This sounds like funny storytelling. So. <laughs> I accidentally blew up one ship, but I saved the second one. Brand of shame. Archetypes. Oh my god. What is this? You can choose only one of the first tier archetypes at this moment. Archetypes are development paths your characters follow. Each archetype encapsulates a unique set of skills and expertise and represents a specific combat specialization. From the frontline warrior to the indispensable leader preferring to command from the rear, choose who you want to be in the grimdark future of Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. Um... Warrior uh, combatants boasting exceptional melee prowess, capable of dealing high damage in close quarters combat and withstanding heavy amounts of damage. Excel at drawing enemies' attention from less defended allies. I, oh god, what did I just click on? This thing. Oh, I thought this was like a handcuff. It's like a monocle. It's like examine. Jesus. Do you pick support class? Yeah, I picked Biomancer. Officer, use willpower and fellowship to improve combat capabilities of their allies, turning them into even greater threats on the battlefield. Core focus, extra turn, single target buffs, rescuing allies, and momentum. Uh, okay. Operative, uses intelligence and perception to find and exploit weaknesses in an enemy defenses. None can withstand an attack from an operative. Core focus, precise single attacks, defense penetration, uh, area buffs, consistent firing position. 
Soldier, master of ranged weapons, quickly able to assume an advantageous position from where they stand ready to rain fire on an enemy. While, uh, while well trained in a highly diverse range of arms, a soldier is particularly proficient at blasting their targets with burst fire and area weapons. Core focuses movement and ranged attacks, cover and dodge, burst fire and area attacks. Uh... Alright, what does this lead to? I can't really read these right now. Uh, assassin, masters at identifying slight vulnerabilities, damage, dodge, uh, dodge reduction. Vanguard, unstoppable force on the front line and a beacon to allies. Even when facing extremely heavy fire, Vanguard grows stronger in the crucible of battle. Uh, Frontline leader, defensive support, temporary wounds. Bounty hunter, methodical killers that leave trails of dead bodies in their wake. A bounty hunter chooses their next target before the previous one has even realized it's dead. Critical hit, defense reduction, killing target priority, repositioning. Master tactician, always in the thick of battle using leadership and combat prowess. Master tacticians are able to harness the momentum of their party to enhance the combat effectiveness of their allies and themselves. Primary goal is scaling with party success, long-term single target buffs. Momentum and versatility. Um, that sounds fun. Grand strategist. Masters of battlefield positioning for themselves and allies. Able to increase battle effectiveness of their party by designating and strengthening important parts of the battlefield. Core focus. Battlefield control. Ally buffs. Unique ability. Enemy debuffs. He's got banners. I like that too. Uh, Arch militant. A formidable master of warfare, able to blend various weapons and styles, mid-combat, melee range, anything in between. Arch Militant is the best at it, becomes stronger and stronger with each second in battle. Uh, versatility. When it uses an attack different from the previous attack, you gain a stack of versatility. The types of attacks can be single shot, melee attack, uh, area melee attack, area shot, or burst shot. You get plus five weapon skill and ballistics for every stack of versatility. If you have four or more stacks, you deal additional damage. Wow. So as long as you keep changing it up, you will get tougher every round of combat. That's pretty awesome. All right, I like Grand Strategist. Who can become that? The middle two. Officer and Operative can become that. I also liked Master Tactician. The only one that can become both of those is an Officer. Okay. Officer uses Willpower and Fellowship. I had a minus to awareness. Okay, that's not going to really com uh, conflict with this. Turning them into greater threats on the battlefield. So bring it down. Immediately grant an ally an extra turn with action points equal to two, but no movement points. If the ally is under the effect of voice of command and kills an enemy before the end of the officer's turn, the ally gains a one-time additional momentum. Voice of command. Force an ally to push themselves, increasing their characteristics for one round. All of the officer's abilities can be applied to the target of voice of command from any distance. A character who becomes the target of voice of command cannot be targeted by this ability again for two rounds. Okay. Fellowship, willpower, toughness, weapon skill, ballistic skill. Uh, ooh, is that going to hurt me, though? Because I've got minus fellowship. But I've got... Persuasion, coercion, and commerce will use int instead of fellowship, but that does not mean that... Um, the skills will. Yeah, fellowship bonus. Hmm. Yeah, fellowship is used a lot for this stuff. Shoot, do I need to change my homeworld? Might need to change my homeworld. Nothing you picked uses in. Yeah. Uh. That has minus fellowship. That has minus fellowship. This is for the emperor. Always nice. This is minus willpower. The psyker stuff uses willpower, so that's out. This is okay. What is this? Voidborn. Uh, that's the lucky. This is like the lucky one where they re-roll bad stuff. Death World has minus. Okay, that's out. So Voidborn or Imperial are both okay for what I want to play. So Voidborn. Um, 
There's a lot of chances to re-roll bad rolls. I really enjoyed in Baldur's Gate 3 playing Halfling, who had that same ability, almost. But Jinx is concerning. When a Voidborg character has more than half wounds, all chances of all creatures, including enemies and 3-cell radius, increase by 10%. What is chances? While you have less than 50%, all chances of all creatures, including enemies and 3-cell radius, are decreased by 10%. I don't know what chances are. There's no tooltip for that. Imperial world. Uh, can select any characteristic and add a plus 10 bonus. Like, is that like chance to hit? Chance to be hit? So when you're more than half health, everyone in three within three cells of you has a 10% better chance to do everything. If you're less than half health, everyone within three cells of you has a 10% less chance to do anything. I guess. Honestly, this sounds interesting, and we're going to be casting stuff on allies because of the Biomancer, and this has Contagious Luck, so let's do that. So, we'll do this. Oh, we don't get... So, like, with Forge World, there was, like, a special thing there. Is that only for Forge World? No, Imperial World has a thing. Imperial World has pick plus 10 to a stat. Let's do Voidborn. Sounds interesting. All right, Sanction Psyker, Biomancer, plus five Persuasion, minus five Awareness. Uh, I'm gonna be an Officer. All right, Characteristics. Holy cow. <sighs> uh, what, what, what am I doing here? I've got 30 points to spend, apparently. Um, what does my Psyker stuff use? Willpower, willpower, none, psi rating, psi rating, psi rating. Okay, so will willpower for psyker stuff, and I guess fellowship for officer stuff, right? It looks like I can put a max of 10 points into stuff. Um, can't really go wrong with toughness, I imagine. Wait, can you take points out of things to min-max them? Hmm. Hi, guys. Hi, Barry. Um, okay. I'm going to do that. Fellowship, willpower, toughness. Sword class frigate. Invictum Erebus. Daring Destiny. Rock the boat. <laughs> That's our boat. His name is Rock. Edit name. Muck Von Luck. <laughs> there we go. Should name it something like third ship since you blew up the first two. Third time's the charm. Uh, okay. So we start with Iron Arm and Voice of Command. So Iron Arm, it says the target gains. So I assume I can cast this on someone else. So I could just... Put this on like a, a melee fighter in the party, assuming I get one. Oh man, Chad, it's been 71 minutes. It's time to play the game. Woo! -hoo! Holy crap! The upper decks.
If the game crashes and I have to do all that again, I'm gonna be big sad. <laughs> big sad! Press any key. 